Let's take a look at Geopex Survey Editor. I already have a project, AFG9. I'm the current user, and I have a data set, AFG4. This data set has already been imported in the sense that the raw file format, this case a TDS file, has been converted to Geopex native survey editing file, which is the OBS or observations file. To open that OBS file, I go to my data set pull down, and then I go to edit. This will open up the Geopex survey editor, which has my afg4.obs file open. And this is the file that was created from my raw file. One of the really nice features of Geopex Survey is that regardless of the file type that is imported, Geopex will always convert that to an OBS file which is open with the survey editor. What that allows me to do is to import multiple file types but only have to deal with and learn one editor. In the Geopex Survey Editor, let's first take a look at some of the icons that are available as well as the menu selections. The icons, of course, have pop-up hover information such as open, save, new, print, and your preferences for your imported files. Additional icons are cut rows, copy rows, paste rows, delete rows, and undo deletions. Moving further, we have a find and replace icon, rebuild change from linking codes, replace, add, subtract, multiply, divide, prefix, suffix, for adding prefixes and suffixes to points, a new remark, new setup, new observation, new chain icon, and over to the far right of the dialog is the up and down view, which I currently have, and then the side by side view. I tend to prefer working in the up and down view, so I'll go ahead and switch back to that view. Looking at the menu options, we'll have file, new, open, save, and you can see the icons next to these are the same functions as the icons we just reviewed. The only difference is that these are accessible from the pull down menu rather than the icon. Moving over to edit, you'll see many of the same commands, including the selection icons and the new icons. Under view, we have the split layout, up and down, side by side, and then a reset for the table columns, which will allow us to move those columns back into place if we make any changes to them. And of course we have a help button as well. At this point we haven't seen any columns. However, if we move further down in the Geopex survey editor, we'll see there are setups, a group called all observations, and a group called chains. Let me click on setups, and then click the plus mark, very much like Windows Explorer, and then I will see which setups I have for this job. Setup on point one, a setup on point 59, point two, one, two, three, point two, and point two again. And further down, I will start to see the columns. Occupy point, point number, instrument height, feature if any, DTM attribute plus is to include in the DTM, the geometry for the point, whether it's point or curve, zone, description, time, date, and reference name if available. Let's take a look at the first setup underneath point one. I'll simply click the plus mark to expand that and then click on the setup again. That will show in both displays all of the observations or side shots and back sites taken from that setup at point one. And as I move down to the column section, you can see that as I click on point name or at the top of any column, it will be sorted first, initially in an ascending order. A second click will give me the listing in a descending order. And a third click will go back to an unsorted order. Since this is a raw data file consisting of setups and angles and distances, we'll have items for points such as point name, feature, linking code, rod height, geometry, DTM attribute, zone, and of course, being raw data, we will have horizontal angle, a zenith angle, a distance, and the type of distance as well. In this case, S for slope distance as opposed to H for horizontal. If I need to make any changes to this data, I can simply click on the columns, such as rod height, double click to enter that cell, and then make changes. Perhaps this 
instrument height or rod height rather should have been a 6.5 and I will either click into another column to accept that or I can hit my tab key for some of the other fields for points there will be a preset selection such as linking code if I click on the column here for linking code for point number six I'll see a choice of available linking codes and that is set by my survey preferences in this case I have BL asterisk EL asterisk which is begin line and end line OC which is a curve point CL asterisk for close etc I'll have similar choices under the point geometry in that I will have P and C be available to me point for a point type of operation and C for a curve type of point the other column options besides being able to sort in ascending descending and no sort order are the ability to expand the column width contract the column width and actually left click and hold down on the column title and move where that column will appear in your display one of the most used column operations is the ability to select an entire column and add or subtract a value from that column. For instance, let's go to horizontal angle and I'll leave that column unsorted. I'll left click to select that column and then right click to select the entire column. And just for argument's sake, let's say that the first shot, the backside at point two, should have been zeroed out in the instrument. In our case, we have a horizontal angle of 114 degrees, 54 minutes, and 7 seconds. Previously, a user would have to go back to a raw file or even further back, go to the field book and update the information. But now, using the Geopack Survey Editor, what I can do is, now that I have this entire column selected, I can choose minus and then I can subtract 114 degrees, 54 minutes, and 7 seconds from all of the observations underneath the setup for point 1. And you can see just how quickly that was done for all of these points. This is a very handy feature and is used by many of our clients. Another place where this is very commonly used is in the rod height field. Let me click in that column and then I will go ahead and select by left clicking and holding down my mouse quite a few rod heights here. Once again I will do a right click I will say minus and I will subtract let's say half a foot off of all these rod heights. Click in the column and we'll see that those rod heights have been changed and updated. Another very handy feature is the ability to use search and replace functions in the Geopack Survey Editor. Let's take a look at features and I'll sort those in descending order and let's say these 4001 features should have been feature 4002. I will select those, right click, and then I'll say replace and we'll change those to 4002. Click OK and then all of those features are updated. Let's close out of setup one for now and move down to the all observations field. What all observations is is a collection of all of the points that were shot from all of the setups in this file. Where that is most handy is the ability to renumber points and this all observations field allows to renumber points all at one time rather than choosing them under each particular setup. So I will go ahead and select all observations here and I will right click once again say select column select column for my point name and then I will say add and I will add let's say 1000 to all of the point numbers click and then we'll see all of the point numbers updated underneath the all observations fields. Let's close all observations by clicking the minus and then let's take a look at chains. I'll expand my chain list simply by clicking the plus and then I can expand each chain individually by clicking the plus 
and then we'll see the point list for that particular chain. In this case, this chain consists of point 1135 and 1141. If I wish to add a point to this chain, I can go up to the menu and say New Observation and give a point number of 1142. I'll say OK. And now point number 1142 and all the available information is added to my chain list for chain 312-0. If I desire to delete that point from the chain, I can simply go up to my icon, click Delete Rows, and that will delete that point from my chain list for that chain 312-0. In a similar fashion, if I were to go back to All Observations and select point 1002 as an example, I can click Delete to delete that point, except in this case, this is a point that came from raw data, and we only strike through that point and remove it from any processing. We do not actually delete it out of the OBS file at this point. If I do click Delete again, I will be prompted to delete that point permanently from my OBS file. I will choose No, and I will actually go back and choose Undelete, Undo Delete, to go ahead and remove that strike through on point 1002. Finally, let's go ahead and close all observations and take a look at the settings for the Geopack Survey Editor, or what we call our preferences for the OBS file. What this allows us is to tell Geopack what types of items we expect in the OBS file and whether those items should be checked on File Open, File Save, or both. The particular items to be checked are underneath the other tabs here, under Setups, Observations, XYZ, and Chains. And the way this operates is you simply click on the tab, for example Setups, and you define by placing a checkbox whether particular items are required to be in the OBS file from the import, such as geometry, date, time, point name, etc. One difference is the instrument height, and that allows us to specify both a minimum and maximum value. Typically, we will know reasonable ranges on these values, and this will let us automatically check for any errors in the input of the instrument height upon, in our case, both file open and file save. Moving on to observation, we can see that we can require a point name, of course, a horizontal angle, vertical angle, slope distance, rod height, etc. And of course these values for horizontal, vertical angle, slope distance, and rod height also have reasonable minimum and maximum values that we can enter and check. For example, for our slope distance, perhaps we have a requirement that our maximum slope distance should be 500 feet, and I've just put a minimum of a tenth of a foot just to be somewhat reasonable there and we can define a maximum of 500 feet. So when this OBS file is opened and saved according to our settings, this will be checked and a report will be created. Moving on to the XYZ tab, this is more for pre-processed or pre-reduced data, and we can define an X, Y, and Z. Those of course are required values, and then they'll have a minimum and maximum value according to the project parameters on the actual field data we are working with. Last value is chains, and of course we can require a chain name, a DTM attribute, a zone, and a feature for those. Once we are happy with our features, we will click Save, and then to save my OBS file, I can click the Save button, and then we will see a report where Geopack has gone and checked those preferences for us and given us a report on any missing or incorrect values. Let me go ahead and close that. I will close the OBS editor and finally take a look where that report is saved for us. And that will be under Dataset, Review Reports, and that will be in my activity log for my data set and that will have my import settings, any activities in the OBS file, 
and any changes I've made in the OBS file as well. I'll go down to the bottom of this dialog because we made quite a few changes in, in the example and we can see our report on our validation for our OBS file.